Guys, let's have a spontaneous discussion about the reality as it is, without the veil, without the propaganda. Stolberg uh, just today basically said that NATO is not going to be shooting down Moscow missiles over Ukraine. The Secretary General said that this wouldn't happen. NATO policy is unchanged, we will not participate in this conflict, we will not become part of it, he emphasized. Meanwhile, Poland also said that it's not going to be shooting down missiles, but at the same time, allies had no problem shooting down Iranian missiles going into Israel. So what is this if not a clear double standard? What is the actual reason why NATO cannot be shooting down missiles flying over Ukraine? Why not? Uh, they did that to Iran. They, they can't do it to even part of Ukraine. What, what could be the reason for that, right? So I counted three possible reasons. Number one, NATO thinks that Ukrainians are second class. Number two, NATO is afraid of nuclear response from Moscow. And number three, NATO just doesn't care. Oh, who cares? Right? And of course we see this is not number three because NATO cares. That's why it's still helping Ukraine. It wants democracies to win. So they're doing something about it, but clearly not enough. I think it's obvious that it's not because they think Ukraine is a second class. But actually, you know what? NATO indeed in some way just doesn't care. The policy of NATO right now is for Moscow not to win, but for Ukraine not to lose. It's basically, it's like keeping Ukraine on uh, sedation, or, or like, you know how in the hospital they have this? Uh, this is what I feel like NATO is doing to Ukraine. Ukraine is, let's say, is attacked by a virus, and United States and NATO has all the medications and tools to give to Ukraine and be like, hey, use them, cure yourself from this virus that is attacking you. If Ukraine doesn't cure itself, then the virus is going to use Ukraine's potential and add it on top of its resolve to expand and go further. So yeah, NATO has all the tools to help Ukraine recover, but it just, you know, barely gives Ukraine like a pill here, a little drug here, a little drug there, just for Ukraine to be like, barely staying alive like barely staying alive actually not even if ukraine wouldn't would not invent unmanned drone systems like fpv and sea drones ukraine would already be suffocated so nato is not even doing that i mean of course ukraine is <laughs> trying to survive for as much as it can but ukraine look at what ukraine has to deal with look at that monster Together with North Korean missiles flying into Ukraine, Iranian drones are flying into Ukraine, China is supplying everything Moscow wants for its tech. And it, China helps Moscow uh, evade sanctions the most. The, the missile that hit Ukrainian hospital, the Moscow missile, it had several chips made in the United States. The United States doesn't do even that. It doesn't it just can't even punish China for trading with Moscow. It's all right, anyway, I'm getting deterred here, but let me remind you about an incident where Moscow missile went into Polish airspace and it's been there for 39 seconds and then Moscow missile came out of NATO airspace and has attempted to kill Ukrainians. I can say for a fact a missile flew out NATO airspace with intention to kill Ukrainians. How is that is acceptable to you? How? How, why do you allow Moscow to penetrate your dignity 39 seconds deep? Even a millisecond is too much. It should be black and white. There should have been consequences for this. Western politicians are spineless. You, you, you became relaxed. Uh, uh, I don't want to say you, my viewer, but you probably know that appeasement is not good and being cowardly is not good. But just in general, our general politics, Western mindset, especially of the stronger countries, because of course we have Czech Republic, we have Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, we have Denmark who gave away to Ukraine all of their artillery, artillery and is preparing to give Ukraine all of it anti-air systems. Because Denmark knows that for as long as Ukraine stands. Denmark and Europe and the entire Western civilization is safe for as long as Ukraine heart is beating. Denmark knows that. Denmark is a small country, was it like 5 million population? Yeah, Denmark population is not even 6 million. That's like what? 
that's one third of New York, one fourth of New York, just one, one city. But Denmark has done so much more than the entire United States. So much more. What about Estonia, a little country with what, like two million people? Like over more than 1% of their GDP. According to the Statista, Latvia and Estonia have donated nearly 1% of G their GDPs to Ukraine. Denmark, 0 0.22. United States, 0 0.25. Norway, wow, look at those, those super countries. How much they're donating to Ukraine. This is where United States have fallen, should I say. The, the leader of the free world, the strongest of them all. Meanwhile, the enemy is still the same. This is like Yes, classic. that's what we wanted you to think. <laughs> they have just switched the branding. They, they switched the label. It's the same kind of evil. It, it, but even a bit worse, it has learned on its mistakes. It's exploiting our democracies now. Weaponizing immigration, bribing politicians. It runs a troll farm in the internet. This would not have been imaginable during the USSR times. The enemy has learned it became stronger, it became more evil. Deliberately targeted Ukrainian children hospital with one intention to spread terror. They want Ukraine to be in terror. They want Ukrainians to suffer. They want Ukrainians to flee their country. They want Ukrainians to surrender. It's the same tactic Hitler used with his uh, rockets to bomb London. He didn't care where in London that missile hits. He just cared that it would kill somebody and he was hoping that that would scare British people and scare their allies to and give up into fighting. This is the same tactic. And of how many more deaths is enough until Ukraine is allowed to shoot at those who shoot at us? Ukraine is given weapons, but is not allowed to use it hitting the airports where those missile launchers are. This is insane. Why? Why the restriction? Ukraine is at the spearhead of the fight against authoritarian regimes. United States and, and NATO, they are covered. The spineless covered. If the enemy hasn't changed, all you have to do is just keep playing the same playbook. It's being firm to the bullies, which is Moscow Empire. Moscow Empire understands only the language of force. Only languages understands. That's, that is an absolute rule. It only understands force. And second absolute rule, they always break their word. Always. That's always in history. At, at the moment where the agreement no longer benefits Muscovites, they just break it. They don't care. This is why the phrase, the agreement with Muscovites isn't worth the paper it's written on. This is, I don't know, we don't know who said it. It's the generational wisdom. The only agreement they will understand is a punch to a fucking face. Although, okay, we don't need to punch them. We just need to not flinch and be ready. We must stand firm guard our dignity, guard our freedom, not let them penetrate it 39 seconds deep. The West right now forgot the playbook. I wanted to remind you the incident that happened in 1961 where American and Moscow tanks were facing each other in a standoff. What happened was that Moscow has violated uh, the agreement. Listen to this. By October, East German officials had begun to deny U.S. diplomats unrestricted access to East Berlin. This violated the part of the agreement with Moscow on Germany. See, Moscowites, they violated the agreement. And what did uh, Kennedy said? He didn't say, ah, oh, well, it's just a tiny thing. No, he freaking brought tanks. Moscow brought their tanks and the standoff has begun. The point is, you can't tolerate when they violate your airspace. You can't tolerate when they start violating your agreements. I don't remember, mind you, <laughs> United States also had an agreement with Ukraine, the Budapest memorandum. Ukraine gave up all of its nukes. But I don't want to play that card. It's just so sad that we don't have someone like Reagan right now or Kennedy. We know only too well that war comes not when the forces of freedom are strong. It is when they are weak that tyrants are tempted. We simply cannot learn these lessons the hard way again without risking our destruction. The actual disaster may have yet to come. It's interesting that the playbook shows us how to prevent it, but the Western people are afraid to play it.
they became, yeah, as I said, too cozy, cozied up. Cozied up. Moscow's actually really good at that, too. They they sprinkled it there, peace-loving. They completely got away with annexing and another sovereign country's territory after 2014. And, and, and before that, they invaded Georgia and also completely uh, got away with that. The West was just blind to see who they really are. They're just the same Soviet Union, the same Moscow Rem Empire, just under a different name. They are using Western technologies, as we know, they're using Western components and leading the fight against Western civilization, which Ukraine is a part of. You know where the, the borderline between Western and Moscow civilization goes? Is, is the, it's the line where human lives matter, the, and the other side, human life is just a resource. This is the cultural divide of Western civilization and Moscow civilization, and they're a parasite, they're parasitic on ours. And, and of course, they're really good at abusing, manipulating us, but we have to be strong. We have to see what they are in reality. We, we, we have to have dignity. The enemy is not sleeping, they are using internet trolls in United States uh, to intervene in your elections. Ha they have swamped uh, Twitter, by the way. Now Elon Musk is uh, taking pro-Moscow side. Elon, w this is a fact. Elon Musk is taking pro-Moscow side. The leader of the free world, at least that United States has been in the last, I don't know, since the Second World War, United States has been the leader of the free world, guys. Without the United States, this world would have would have been screwed. But at the same time, the United States is the best humanity has. And the best humanity has right now, running for the president, a guy whose presidency will be uh, elderly abuse, and the other guy being so arrogant, he's undermining the foundation of democracy. There's a real cult of Trump in the United States right now. They're idolizing him. So yeah, this is where we are right now. This is what uh, the free world has to offer. Everything right now is holding on the shoulders of brave Ukrainian men and FPV drones and the allies of Ukraine, of course. All those countries donating just a tiny smidget. The West has the power to cure Ukraine uh, from, its, from the virus that is infecting it. The West has the tools to stand up for humanity and dignity. The West has become, become diluted by Moscow sugar coatings. And the West became relaxed, unfortunately. Why, uh, like, 60 years ago, Kennedy didn't even flinch an eye, or Reagan? Like, nope, not an inch. You don't move, you move our tanks, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna defend in every inch of our territory. We're gonna defend every inch of our dignity. What happened now? I guess I kind of answered that question too, because Muscovites are really good at deception. Muscovites are really good at deception. And people are just inherently lazy. I guess you add 2 plus 2, so in a way Muscovites also exploited our inherent laziness to double check facts, to not jump to conclusions, like many jump to conclusions that without evidence that the election in the United States was rigged. What proof do you have? to say that they are. Nobody teaches in school the how to maintain informational hygiene. I was not ready actually. When, Moscow, when, I, when I caught Moscow lying for the first time in my life, it was in 2013. Ukraine had a revolution happening and Moscow was saying that Ukraine should federalize itself, meaning break apart on like in individual states and have like a federation. And I remember how uh, some kind of U.S. senator, they translated his words as if he also wanted the federalization in Ukraine. I, I, I looked up the original words that he said, and I was shocked to see that Muscovites have translated his words incorrectly to benefit their agenda, to bear their ambitions. I was like, wow, I went down into such a rabbit hole of realization. I couldn't believe it at first. I'm like, but I, I kept seeing more and more and more and more and more. They have always been like that. I started learning history. They have always been like that. Part of what I want on my channel is to show you guys their real face. Not the mask that they show to the world, but the actual face hiding behind that mask. And it's utterly evil. It should cease existing because it drags humanity into the past. They're totally fine to kill 
children in a hospital. They actually they will actually spend millions of dollars on the missile to do that. Millions of dollars. And they will be totally fine killing you and your children as well. They don't even care about their own people. 120,000 Muscovites have died. At least 120. For what? For imperial ambitions. Putin visited North Korea. What, what's the real reason? Because he's pushing it to go to war with South Korea. The operation in Israel on 8th of October and the operation to capture Avdivka city in Ukraine started simultaneously. He wanted a distraction from what really was going on. Their propaganda is so good. How many people did brainwash to scream free, free Palestina? Wow, insane. So, free world. Do you have what it takes? Do you still have dignity? I hate to say this, but you gotta wake the fuck up. <laughs> it's funny, because th that would mean you, you, I would imply that you'd become woke, but no, not, not that woke. But in a way, wokeness is actually also, it's, it's a delusion, it's an imitation. People who claim that they're woke now, they are not woke, actually. It's, it's a toxic belief, thinking that they are somehow better than the other. I don't know, I just gotta hope for the best, and uh, I'll try to bring you the real Moscow Empire's face on this channel more. The United States has an obligation to its citizens and to the people of the world never to let those who would destroy freedom dictate the future course of life on this planet.